Good day. The name of the telecast is In Season and Out of Season. And I'm Father Tom, and I'm glad to be with you. And I'm reading from the 43rd chapter of Isaiah. But now, says the Lord, not tomorrow, but now, he who created you, O Jacob, who formed you, O Israel, fear not, I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Fear not. I have bought you back. That's what it means, redeemed. I have bought you back. You are mine. You are mine. You belong to me. Fear not. I am yours. And you are mine. Know that you belong to me. Know that your fears must rest into my heart, for you belong to me. You are mine. I redeemed you. I redeemed you from Pharaoh. I redeemed you from the house of bondage. I redeemed you. I died upon the cross. I gave my life for you. You are mine. I call you by name. I call you by name. I call you by name. You see, the Lord is not like uh, the insurance company. The Lord does not call us by number. He calls us by name. When we go to the airport, they don't care about my name. They look at the license number. They look at the license number. I called you by name. You are mine. You belong to me. You must know that. You belong to me. You are mine. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I have redeemed you. Fear not. Fear not. You have a father, a father who cares, a father who has invested everything in you. His name is the God of the universe, and he's given Jesus in ransom for you. Fear not. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. It does not say if you pass through the waters. It says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you go through the time of distress, I will be with you. When you go through the time of turmoil, I will be with you. When you go through the time of death, I will be with you. It does not say that we will avoid that. It says, when you go through it, I will be with you. There's the whole point. I will be with you. When Moses received the revelation on top of Mount Sinai, he said, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and tell him to let my people go? And the Lord said, I will be with you. I will be with you. I will be with you. Do you believe today that he is with you? Do you believe today that he has called you by name? Do you believe today that he does not call you by number? Do you believe today that you have been ransomed with the blood of the Lamb? Do you believe today that you are precious in His eyes? Do you believe today that you have no right to fear? Do you believe that? Even if you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Through the rivers, they will not overwhelm you. We do not need to be overwhelmed by the rivers of trouble. We do not need to be overwhelmed by the rivers of trouble. Because I will be with you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. And the flame shall not consume you. And it says, you will walk through the fire. And those flames will try to burn you. But you will not be burned. You will not be consumed. Because I am your father. I call you by name. I am with you. Because you are precious in my eyes and honored, and I love you. You are precious, precious in my eyes and honored, and I love you. My Lord, my Lord, how much more can you say to us? Look on the cross. Hear him say, from the cross, you are precious in my eyes. You are honored, and I love you. Look at the cross, at the naked Christ saying, you are precious in my eyes, and you are honored, and I love you.
the basic message of the love of God is the message that everyone needs to hear over and over again. That love poured out in Christ Jesus. That love that saves us from death. On December 6th, several months ago, we were at the Espousal Retreat House. They brought a child to us. His name is Cameron. Cameron is severely autistic, or was severely autistic. Cameron was brought to us, you know. I don't know where they got our name. I don't know. I'll never know where people get our name. One lady and husband came to us after her son was in an accident. They said, how did you happen to go to see Father Tom? Someone at Spalding Rehab told us about him. Spalding Rehab. Well, Cameron came. And you know, being autistic, he would not stay still for a minute. And you know what? That's fine. I have no problem with Cameron running around the church. There he was running around the church, and every once in a while he'd come back to his mother. We'd say a little prayer over him, and he'd start running again, and we'd say a little prayer over him, and he'd start running again, and we'd say a little prayer over him, and he'd start running again. And you know, you would think that, that not very much happened because, you know, here's this little boy running around, we don't have time to really pray too much because he won't let you. But God hears and answers prayer. God hears and answers prayer. All the people prayed mightily that day. That was the 6th of December. Do you know what happened on the 7th? He was home. He has all these toys, you know. He doesn't know that they're riding toys. What he does with them is he tips them all over. So when... The 7th of December came. That was the next day. You know what Cameron did? Cameron got all the toys, put them on their legs, and began to ride. For the first time. For the first time. The parents were, were amazed. They were amazed that their little boy had, something had happened. Something had happened, not only to the little boy, but to them. Something had happened. The love of God had come to them. The love of Christ had come to them. Well, one day, because Cameron was nonverbal, he had a sign for, I'm done. And that's the sign. And he couldn't do it. So what he would do is with his father, he would get his father's hands and do this. I'm done. Which means he didn't want to eat anymore. You know what dad said? Cameron, you are not getting out of this chair until you say, I'm done. And he said, I'm done. The first words out of his mouth. I'm done. I'm done. Then they started to count. One, and he said two. They said three, he said four. They said four, he said five. Counted up to five. And the next day up to twelve. You're precious in my sight, and I love you. Last night, they brought Cameron back. And we prayed, praying that God would just connect more little things in his head so that this child can get along. Oh, you want to know the best thing that happened? The best thing that happened is that he had nothing to do with his dad for three and a half years. And one day, he walks up to dad on the couch and gives him a hug and a kiss.
precious in my eyes. And I love you. Then there's someone else who took a, a heart attack at 20 years old. Michael is his name. And his parents have started to come to our services. One day I asked, why do you keep on coming? The mother said, we receive peace here. Michael has started to wake up. At this point, he's blind. But you know, the parents are hopeful. Why? Because they hear. You are precious in my sight. And I love you. And I call you by name. And when you walk through the water, I will be with you. And the fires, they shall not burn you. You see, We cannot do any of these things on our own power. This is the love of God poured out. We cannot make these things happen. The only thing we can do is set the stage. The only thing we can do is pray. The only thing we can do is care for people. That's the only thing we can do. And then we set the stage for the Holy Spirit to come and say, fear not, I love you. I call you by name. I am with you. When you pass through the waters, they shall not overwhelm you. When you pass through the fires, they shall not burn you. You are mine. You are precious to me. See how many people have come through our doors looking for that kind of hope. Looking for that kind of hope because every door was closed on them. Looking for a touch from God. How many people have come desperate looking for a touch from God because they had no place else to go. And the only thing we can do is pray. The only thing. And believe that he is faithful and he considers us precious and he considers us great and awesome and he calls us by name and he's going to be with us even when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. There is no healing virtue in my hands. But Jesus is the healer. And it all depends upon his great love. It all depends upon his precious love for people. That's what it depends upon. Upon nothing else but his love. Last night, the whole family was there. Expecting God to do something new for Cameron. And maybe what they like the most is that I give Cameron free reign. If he needs to run, let him run. It's okay. It's okay to run. God 
God will catch him while he's running. He's in an atmosphere of love, an atmosphere of prayer, an atmosphere of caring. I call it the church's hospital. I call it the last outpost. For in a very real sense, we are the last outpost. People refer people to us when they reach that brick wall, that dead end street, that time of anguish. I got a call just today that one of the doctors of Winthrop has recommended her patient to call me and to speak with me. Bring them for Father Tom, they say. Go see Father Tom. get so weary because what am I but flesh and blood but you know when I am most weak then I am most strong I know that to be true I don't like it I don't like it at all when I am most weak than I am most strong. My heart goes out to people. My heart goes out to people, especially when I cannot reach out to them because of my own inadequacy. heart goes out to people, for people suffer so without the benefit of knowing that they are loved and cherished by Jesus. We never know who will be at our door. Just last week, something very interesting happened. And I want you to pray for this person. It was about 11.30 at night, 11 o'clock at night, a bang on the door. I opened the door. In walks this young man. I can't say I'm afraid. I said, what's your name? He told me. I said, come in the chapel. I want to pray with you. I prayed with him for about 15 seconds. He gets up. I've got to leave. I'm afraid. <coughs> I'm afraid. I don't know what he was carrying. I don't know what he was going through. I don't know. But he came to the last outpost. came to the last outpost. Someone must have told them, you can knock on that door. They'll open it for you. Even if they can't fix you, they'll listen to you. This week I had a priest come to me. Cancer of the tongue. The provincial of a whole order. He is the provincial of the group in Stockbridge. The Mercy Fathers. The people who run the Divine Mercy Shrine. 
He is the head of the whole order. 52 years old. Brought to me. Three hours riding to be prayed with at the last outpost. I realize how impotent I am unless God moves. I realize how impotent I am unless God moves. We prayed with that priest for an hour. We prayed for an hour. People suffer so much. And there are so few people that care. So few people that will lend a hand. The other day we're getting in the car. Father Joshi, our Indian priest, had to laugh. Your man comes up to me and says, Slip me a quick prayer. He said, Where did that come from? Slip me a quick prayer. We helped this man. He was in distress many years ago. My heart goes out for these people because they're legion and they don't know where to go. And yet the message is, I've called you by name. You are mine. You are precious to me. I love you. When you pass through the water, I will be with you. They shall not overcome you. When you go through the fire, you shall not be burned. For I love you, and I am with you. This is just part of our day just part of our day. You never know how people come to us. How people are sent to us. You never know. And they all come needy. They all come poor. They all come broken. They come to the last out. I beg your prayers. For I cannot continue to do this work without your prayers. I cannot continue to do this kind of work without people who will pray for me and hold me up. Because this kind of work is much more than saying a couple of words to God. It's coming into the presence of people who are in anguish and need the touch of God more than they need life itself. These are the people that always have come to me. These are the people that have always have come to me, wherever I was stationed. And sometimes it's just too much. That's why you've got to pray that God would raise other people up, that there would be other lost outposts where people, where people will be cared for and hear the message, you are precious, I love you.
You are mine. When you walk through the water, you shall not drown, and the fire shall not consume you, for I am with you. I pray today, Jesus. I pray today for these people. These people like sheep without a shepherd that is seeking your face and seeking your love. I pray today for them. I pray today that you would be so generous to them as to raise up other places, other lost outposts. For Lord, your people perish. For lack of love and for lack of knowing that you are in love with them. I pray for the manifestation of your spirit for the sake of these people. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We are the last outpost, and I pray he raises others. God bless you.